let's talk about Trisha Paytas. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. First and foremost, blah, 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 if Trisha sees this girl, many, 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 many positive vibes. Obviously, if you see my content in the past, you know I'm pretty harsh on Trisha, but that's because I know she's so capable. And also, I, oh, man, I'm rooting for her so hard. And she, um, I think she did it, boys. I think she really came out on top this time. So in today's podcast, we're talking about Trisha Paytas and whether or not motherhood has changed her. I am been a mom for a week. It's very exciting. And um, obviously, you guys know this is my job. I've been doing YouTube for the past literal 16 years. So I'm super lucky. I've always been super lucky to have this job. And now more than ever, I am so thankful to have this job. And um, I love what I do. And I'm so happy that I get to be a stay at home, work from home mom. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna already get bit. Before we jump in, I am drinking an apple cider vinegar mix with a organic coconut sugar with low, low, low sugar um, because I have lupus and I can't have too much sugar, carbohydrates. And so I don't like the stevia, which is natural sugar. So I actually stole some of my brother's coconut sugar and it's not too shabby. So, mm. and to clarify, I do like this much apple cider vinegar. And then I do like this much water. And then I put in a little bit of a sweetener. So that's what I'm drinking today. Oh, and my allergies are crazy. Look at my face. Like I'm not even wearing makeup on my face. I'm just wearing a little lipstick and some eye makeup. But dude, I feel like, I feel like it's so clear that I have like congestion. It's that season, girls. It's that season. Okay, now, Trisha. Oh, Trisha. Honestly, regardless of name choices, which I'm going to be real with you, kind of fits the MO, kind of works. I kind of love it. Trisha has changed. And I think when we see change in a person, it should be celebrated, especially when it's for the better. Not that you should celebrate change whenever it happens, but in general, this one is obviously for the positive. I really avoided Trisha content. When she announced she was pregnant, I was like, fuck, this feels like a, like a grab for clout, for views. I was thinking so cynically of her because I was like, girl, and honestly, I'm not necessarily thinking I'm wrong in that, but it was clear she needed a change and that change was a baby. You know you hear those stories about people who change when they have babies? I think Trisha, more than changing, maybe expelled all that negative energy out of her. Because Trisha held on to so much trauma, so much negativity, it showed in her skin. And now, her videos now? Girls, I just like, I've been nine months without Trisha, letting her do her thing, not even checking in really. And then bam, last night, today, this morning, Trisha, 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 Trisha. And my, I couldn't, I was crying. We're trying to do family portraits. <coughs> Little Malibu over here, just <coughs> trying to talk. What are we gonna talk about today? She's a talker. <coughs> yes, she's talking about her experience coming into this world. What else? It's really calm. Because of the C-section, we've had Abba changing all the diapers. <laughs> He's been doing such a good job with that newborn. When they come out, they are... Pretty much every hour. You're an expert now. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> I want to be an expert at it. So we're just enjoying another day at the hospital. Everyone's really nice. Tr Trisha made me cry out of joy and happiness. You know, I want to be a mom more than anything. And so does Trisha, or so did Trisha. And our girl got it. She got her ending. And I, whoo, I, oh, I'm so glad. It's scary in the sense that like, I'm like, I don't know what this becomes. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. My life has always been online and YouTube. And it's like, I don't, you know, obviously I just, I just want to be a mom. Like that's my thing, you know? And that's all I've ever wanted. So it's like this whole new chapter and like, it feels like a whole new me. So I guess it's, in that sense, it's scary to be like presenting myself to you guys. Does that make sense? I'm so fucking relieved. I sent it to a few girls I know who we were all keeping tabs on Trisha and I sent them videos. I said, she did it. Our girl did it. She finally fucking did it. Look, when we change, our energy changes. Whatever happened in the last nine months, the pregnancy, something in Trisha changed. I woke up this morning feeling like a chicken nugget. You guys. When you feel like a chicken nugget, you you feel like not delicious. Well, you feel delicious, but you also feel like fried and fake on the inside. 
because the chicken nugget, I feel like it's McDonald's chicken nuggets and they're fake. I don't know if she's gonna revert back to chicken nugget, Tr Trisha. I don't think so. I think there's a greater reason for her not to, but not even that. I think she must have experienced one of those really rare baby changes. Like a baby can change you. And also props to Moses for not ending up being a crazy narcissist. Because honestly, I was worried. I was scared. I was like concerned. But as I observe their videos and I look at the way they look at each other, I'm like, oh, this is nice. We just arrived at the hospital. We got our room. She's changing. Um, water broke around 5 a.m. And um, yeah, just going through initial pains. We're not sure if it's labor pain or not. <laughs> and you get to come, right? Hmm? You get to come? To be there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You just have to wear. I would look like a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those cups. Oh man, I've been sleeping through most of my labor and delivery. <laughs> Every oh, chance fine. I get. Hmm? I'll sleep more now. Yeah. Sounds Good fine. I don't I'll know what happened. It. I broke my mask. I'll fix it. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Getting ready. <laughs> this is what we want to see. And you know what? They did it being one of the most controversial couples on YouTube. And that just makes me happy. Now, hopefully this is a permanent change. And if not, this is a great moment in time we should celebrate. I know so many of us wanted Trisha to either figure it out or some of you wanted her to fail. I don't want Trisha to fail. I've never wanted Trisha to fail. Failing was what she had done a lot of her life. In many regards, relationship after relationship. On the channel said he was sent snaps from some random girl's Snapchat dancing with Sean at a, at a club in West Hollywood, a gay club. And um, I don't really know what to think of it. I don't know what to think of it. Oh, oh, so, I'm so sorry to be making this video. I'm so sorry. I don't want this to be too long, but being told my whole entire life, from kid to adulthood, that I'm not good enough, that I am not going to succeed in a career in entertainment, that I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not skinny enough, I'm not talented enough, like, I just wanted to make this video, <laughs> this is the last video you're going to see of me, like, crying and being crazy, I swear. Um, I just need to apologize for this past week of tweets and videos and um, for being an emotional fucking mess. I'm really, really fucking sorry. Um, I was just talking on Twitter about this. I just felt like I had to make a video since I've been posting so many on here. I look a mess, you guys. I'm so sorry. I like literally look a mess. I am sorry. I have no emotional outlets in my real life. Yeah, I have friends and I do have family, but it's really hard for me to talk about my emotions and to be really open with people. I'm 27 years old and I'm, I'm a mess. You don't necessarily even have to look at it as failing. You could look at it as like a moment in time in which those past Trishas had to be chicken nugget Trishas. And honestly, I always saw her as so relatable to me because I, I, not that she's been diagnosed with borderline, but obviously when I see her go up and down in her kitchen, I'm like, oh, that feels relatable. That feels like something I've gone through. And as a woman who wants to be a mother, I can understand how scary it is for the world to see you and say you might not be good enough. Patricia is good enough to be a mother. If she is emanating this energy now that I've seen her go through it, if this is the energy she's gonna have, that's mother energy, girls. That's kindness and warmth and love. And it's all because she found a person who one, saw her and understood her. She saw a person she saw and understood. And together they made love and made a baby. And that baby is the product of their love. I'm really excited about it. I actually wonder too if motherhood and fatherhood is going to be easier for them in some ways. Trisha said her pregnancy was easy, which is kind of great. That's amazing. You know, so many women have this idea that their pregnancies are going to be great. And they're going to be glowing and it's going to be lovely. And then they end up like motion sick or uh, morning sick, sorry, for, you know, so much of their pregnancy that it's not pretty. Like my sister-in-law thought she was going to have great pregnancies. My girl is a champ. Every pregnancy has been awful, but gets better over time. And she just, she's about to have her fourth, which is very exciting. So exciting. Oh my gosh, so many babies. It's baby season. But I... I see a joy there, like all mothers have, like Trisha said, like my sister-in-law, like my mother. The moment you give birth, with the moment it's over, you want to do it again. <laughs> it 
How beautiful is that? That we want to transfer love into a human. Next week's podcast is about values. And when you see that podcast, we reference things like, you know, um, why you want to have children, what, what environment you want for your child. And I know a lot of people are going to think that Trisha hasn't and isn't going to be able to create an environment that's good enough for a child. But to be honest, the way she, she has this video where she tells her story, it's like 50 minutes. I actually think she's going to do it really well. I don't want to even compare her to other people that I think aren't doing the greatest, but you know, that's parenthood. But I think she might even be better at it because she wants it so badly. Like, specifically wants motherhood. She was saying how grateful she was to have this job and to work from home and, and to be a working stay-at-home mom. And I was like, I feel the same way. I cannot wait to be with my child and to be at home and working, but I really want to be with my kid. Versus other parents I know, they, they really do prefer work to their children and that's fine, but I think that's interesting at the same time. Um, but not uncommon. I think most, I think a lot of parents might even prefer work to their children. Now that I think about it, maybe. I'm not sure. Actually, let me ask you guys, because in my head when I fantasize about being a mom, I do fantasize about being really hands-on with my children. Like, I imagine being able to work from home like I do, so in between all my calls, I can jump and go see my kid and be like, who is my baby? And be like so excited. Of course, I'll need some help because I'll be working. And of course, I'd love a stay-at-home partner who also works from home so we could together like balance our stay-at-home schedules with our babies. But I want to be with my child as much as possible. Like I'm really looking forward to when the baby's so young you won't recognize them and I can have them on stream with me and I can do my thing and maybe even breastfeed with a cover or something. I want to do that until the baby's recognizable and then I don't want them on the internet until they want to make that decision. But I look at Trisha and guys, I see... I see a hopeful future. I just see so much beauty, like so much joy in her face. I really hope this is her new self. She said something, I don't remember exactly, but she said something like, uh, oh, she said something about change, how it changed her. I wonder, do babies change us or do we change for our babies or is it both? Is it like a mutual shift? It's like when you're single and you're planning your life out. It's going to look different than when you're partnered. Because when you're partnered, you're adding in a new energy that's going to allow you to move in certain directions. Even having kids, I'm thinking about school districts. I'm thinking about local libraries. I'm thinking about who are they going to hang out with? Like I live in a town of 6,000 people. So I'm like, okay, who are my kids going to be friends with? Like who are they going to socialize with? Um, how am I going to take them to go see their cousins who are now 14 hours away from me? My brother went up and ditched me. He ditched me with the kids which is fine. I'm actually gonna stay where I am. I really love this area. But when I have kids, I'm really thinking, well, how am I gonna get the kids over there? How are they gonna come there? And then I had this great idea of like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be able to like send my kid there for the summer and they're gonna send their kids here for the summer. That's what I used to do as a kid. I used to go to my grandparents' house for the summer and like cousins and aunties and uncles and like how exciting, right? I see this in Trisha. I see this like positive, upbeat energy. She's obviously just had a baby, so she's a little tired, but she, I really see this like joy in her. I really hope it's going to be the new or the current Trisha for as long as she needs, maybe forever. But guys, I think, I think we're seeing a real change in a person, like a real, oh, a real change. How beautiful is that, huh? What does it mean to be a mother? Why would that change you? I think it means to be a protector and a nurturer. I think mothers are both. I think fathers, if they're skilled and lucky, they get to be both. A lot of fathers miss out. A lot of fathers miss out bonding with their children because some fathers can't actually create a connection with the baby until the baby traditionally is a little older or maybe can talk. And that's common, so don't worry too much about it, boys. If that happens, no big deal. Take a deep breath. You're fine. It's really common. But if you're really, really lucky, I think it is lucky to have both. You get to have both. But don't freak out if you don't have it. And even as a woman, if you do not connect to your baby, take a deep breath. It's fine. It happens. It's all like your chemistry is crazy. You're going through hormones. Don't freak out too much about it. Keep it in mind because it is the reality of our lives. We have these babies and maybe they don't change us. Maybe they don't make us better people. But when you're lucky, it's maybe the thing you needed all along. Now, how much of it has to do with motherhood for Trisha? And how much has to do how much of it has to do with actually having a good partner? I doubted Moses, his water stuff, his whole idea about the world. I was like not fucking with it. But the way he looks at her, the way he looks at her, I, 
I just see way too much love. Way too much. And I think that's beautiful. I really hope they're they're good. I hope they're healthy. They seem like it. Like, they really do seem like it. Like, even, oh, God, like, what a cool change, huh? This is what I say about humans. This is what I love observing about us is you can see the change. And as a YouTuber, we have the luxury of having our life documented, which is good and bad. But the good part is that we ourselves get to go back and look at ourselves and say, wow, I was really that person. Guys, do we remember past Trisha? Do we remember Trisha? Hi, hi, no problem. Oh, <laughs> oh double yap. Forgot you're European. Empire is back. Okay, so for all y'all who are easily triggered by vampires or vampire stories, vampire sightings, vampire telephone conversations, exit out this video right now. And boyfriends, like all of it. That'd be like the extreme. And then you would literally be crying at the end of the video. Like you would have a break. Like you, I would break you. That'd be everything. <laughs> I am stepping back from a persona, from a person that is Trish, Trisha Paytas. In all of her glory, and now she is a completely different human. I love it. I love it. Like, not to be so woo-woo, but like, girl, whatever is happening, your stars are aligned. And I love this. So I thought we would be extra woo-woo today. Because I am sponsored by um, High Priestess. We're not sponsored for this video, but usually I am and I love them. But we got some cards in the deck and I already did this in the beginning of the month with you guys, but I want to do it for Trisha. I think it'd be really nice to, again, this is just a <clears throat> subconscious reassurance. This is just a observational tool if you want. You don't have to believe in the deck to feel connected to the deck. I personally don't believe in magic, but I do believe in um, spiritual introspection, if you will, the idea that something can help mold you to, th or not mold you, but, um, spark something in your brain that sends you in a direction. So let's think about Trisha and her baby and the life for new Trisha and how we feel about her and Moses too. Moses looks happier. Moses looks better. I think Moses looks very handsome. They look very happy. Their baby photos were so cute. The way they announced everything was so fresh. Okay, Trisha. Let's read this card for Trisha, her baby, and Moses and their family. Okay. Robin. The Robin brings hope for a new beginning. Ah, so good. Do you guys see it? Hold on. It's kind of, hold on. Can I get this to focus? Ah, I can't get it to focus. It's a Robin. And it says, the Robin brings hope for a new beginning. Guys. I don't believe in the cards, but you know the cards speak for themselves. Fuck, I'm so happy. I'm so happy for her. I just needed it. I needed it not for myself, but I, I needed it for myself. Like I needed it not for the Britney that I am right now, but for the Britney that I'm going to be. Because you have to remember as much as I um, appear slightly more stable than Natricia, and I am, my life shows that, I am still a girl who has all of those internalized fears about being a borderline mom. And now that Trisha has borderline, but there is like nothing more scary than the idea that like I won't be able to do the thing that is so naturally obviously made for me to do. And Trisha got it. So I can't help but feel happy because every time I see a person who is so in pain and so hurt and so struggling actually be able to have their happy ending. It's everything, like it's everything. Trisha, for whatever reason, she did the work. Maybe it was the baby, maybe it was the last time she was on the internet, but the girl did the work. I don't, I'm trying to find it. Like I'm trying to find the discrepancy in her face or her aura or something as I'm watching these videos and I don't see it. I just see a person who over time molded into the person that they were meant to be, to be the mother that they were meant to be, to be the wife they were meant to be. And it's the most beautiful thing and I'm so glad she chose it. I keep thinking of all the ways that Trisha's life could have gone different. All the ways she could have given up. Do you remember like nine months ago before she got pregnant? Uh, she was having that horrible, just like, oh, just everything was a mess. And she, everyone was like, get off the internet, get off the internet. I am so happy she's putting out mom videos. To be honest with you, it's, it's what I'll probably do for some of my content once I become a mom. But on top of that, um, it helps me watch her. Because crazy or not, she's a mom who's gone through the same things all of us will have to go through pregnancy on hormones difficulty getting pregnant um 
uh, water breaking in the middle of the night while she's on the toilet. You know, I love I love when she tells that story about how her water broke, but she wasn't sure. So she kept like going back and forth and she was so confused. And she was like, you know, it was just like messy. And there's so much about motherhood that's messy. You know, you sometimes you poop yourself, but it's still beautiful. You know, I watched my little brother being born. My youngest sibling, um, I watched him being born. I was with my sister and my godmother, God rest her soul. And I was sitting in the room. Actually, we were standing in the room. We were standing back. He is currently 21 and I am 33. And so I think, what was, I, I can't do math. But like we were, I was sitting in the room. My sister was there five years younger, my godmother. And we're watching this baby being born. And my mom is pushing and pushing. It's a vaginal birth, no epidural. My mom, eight kids, no epidural, two kids, two epidurals. She didn't like it so much. So she did, you know, so she's doing it. She's pushing, she's pushing. And here comes this little boy slipping out. She's so slimy and slippery that the doctor almost drops him. It's like, because he just like, boom, he was like, I'm ready. Like he was like ready, came out crying, came out active. I had a little Polaroid camera and I took some pictures of him. Actually, maybe I'd be able to find them for this podcast. Probably not. They're probably packed away. But the point is I even have Polaroid pictures of him. Like there's nothing better than like children coming into the world, you know, period but also especially when when it's all it's all desired you know when you really want it and it's happening and the baby's beautiful and everything's perfect that is what we can hope for do you guys remember there was a little bit of a mm, social scandal like five or six seven years ago I don't remember where people started saying don't say oh I you know I pray for a healthy baby or I hope your baby's healthy as if to insinuate that an unhealthy baby would be less desirable. But I think there is something to be said that a parent would always want their children to suffer less. And so we always wanna pray for a healthy baby, whatever that means, but also a healthy parent. I'm actually mostly curious if Trisha's gonna experience any postpartum depression or anything like that, but she seems so in her joy that she might just skip that. Um, yes, a lot of women experience it, but not every woman experiences it. And so I'm curious because for myself with borderline and PTSD and everything, I am a tendency to be depressed, though I'm a few years clean now. I am curious, like, am I going to have a baby? And am I going to get like postpartum depression? Is it going to be really bad? Am I not going to be able to work? Am I not going to be able to be there for my child? Am I not going to be able to, you know, want to touch my husband? Like, am I going to have problems around all of this? That's what I wonder. So I am grateful that Trisha is putting out videos about being a mom because this is the stuff that I'm going to start Googling. And <clears throat> one of my callers, she's so amazing, like great brain, great. Just everything about her story is wonderful. She just sent me like a whole bunch of parenting books. And I'm just sitting here thinking like, what an amazing community. And I assume that once I get pregnant, I'll also invite a lot of amazing people into my community who will have great ideas about how to help me care for my child. Right. Cause like it kind of does take a village when you're educating yourself. It's not that it takes a village to raise my baby, but it's gonna take a village to give me the knowledge to raise my baby. And I'm gonna be so grateful for when that comes. Trisha said that, she really said that to her viewers that she's grateful for all the advice and she appreciates, appreciates everyone reaching out. And I think that's what's so powerful about an online community. Look, the drama on this platform is insane. I'm so over it, I'm so tired. I just wanna fall in love and be a grandma and like live out my life and make pies for my grandkids. I'm so tired. And I know Trisha's tired. There's something about being online where people scream, be authentic, be authentic. But when you're authentically mentally ill, it's really difficult. And now that Trisha could justify a lot of her actions, but I think if you look at her as a person on a journey, it's been a fucking crazy one. And we should all be very happy for where she's landed. For the sake of her, that baby, and Moses. And look at how much we're benefiting. She's making all this great content. We get to see it, we get to learn, we get to prepare to be parents ourselves. And I think that's really positive. So I think my main takeaway from Trisha and her transformation is that there has been one. You know that saying, um, oh, what is that saying? Wait, I just had it in my head. Um, wait, oh my God, I'm blinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, okay, you know when you love, so I don't know if it's a saying, but I, here's the concept. You know when you love someone and they change, you're like, you changed. Sometimes you get that whether you've changed for the better or the worst. When I got better through my mental illness, people were like, you changed. And I was like, yeah, I did. I got better. Trisha's changed. And there are going to be people who are not going to be happy for her. There are going to be people who are going to send her messages and encourage her to be negative. And there are going to be people who want her to fail. I'm telling you right now, like 
I'm putting my foot down. Don't do that. Don't be that misery loves company person. And if you're going to be that person, I hope Trisha blocks you. Because I've already seen people popping up in comments very rarely. Like, oh, this is going to implode. She's never going to make it. This is crazy. That baby needs to be like taken away. And I'm only that defensive because obviously I understand that people think someone like Trisha is going to be awful to her child. And I would have agreed with you a year ago. But we're not dealing with that Trisha anymore. We're dealing with a different one. And I hope that this change is permanent. But it is a change. And remember, since life is moments in time, this is still just a moment Trisha is existing in. When people go from being bad to good, it's hard for us to process. So I understand that a lot of people want to be like she's racist and homophobic and all of these things. Whoever that Trisha was nine, ten months ago, it's not the person we saw recently. And I'm going to say like, I don't know when the shift happened exactly. I'm going to try to find it in the videos, but there must have been like a shift. And I'm not sure how fast it happened, but there was one for sure. And that's sort of just like a beautiful thing to see, honestly. I think people take for granted how hard it must have been to have been Trisha Paytas her whole life. Trisha really suffered way more than I've ever suffered, um, which is probably why I've been able to manage better than her. Like, I think people would be like, oh, Brittany's like a better borderline, not that Trisha's borderline, but Brittany's better with her mental illness because she didn't do what Trisha did. Trisha had it worse than I did. Trisha didn't have the support system she needed. Look at the whole fight with Moses and Ethan and Hila and everybody. Like, they don't even have anyone. Moses and Trisha are on their own island. And instead of going toxic, they really made the best of it. Holy fuck. Like, is anyone else as crazily impressed? My mind is blown. Like, they like they looked at the probability and was like, we could be both toxic people or we can make this the best thing ever. And I think they made it the best thing ever. So I guess I'm just, I think I'm just too happy because I'm like, fuck yes. This is the win we've all needed. Malibu Barbie is a very cute name, but even that is so Trisha. It's so Trisha. I have names I want to name my kids that I know people will make fun of them for, so I won't do it. But sometimes I wish I was bold as Trisha. Maybe we should name our kids wild names. I don't know. There's something about it. I see how happy she is, and I just, I can't, I don't know. I don't know. It's like I can't even be... Nothing, nothing bothers me about it. I just feel like it's coming from such a good place. I feel like it really is. So maybe that's it. Maybe I feel like because it's coming from such a good place. I'm like, fuck it. Name her Malibu Barbie. I don't give a fuck. People out here naming themselves like names I can't even pronounce. Who cares? Who cares? The kid can change their name. And also, honestly, they're going to get bullied no matter what. You know, people keep telling me not to have kids because I'm. they're going to get bullied because I have an OnlyFans. My kids are going to get bullied because they're going to have me as a mother and I'm going to teach them to stand up for themselves. Kids are going to get bullied no matter what. It's just a part of life. Adults get bullied. It's a part of life. So in some ways, I think that I'm just so open to Trisha and her joy that I don't care what it looks like because it's not my bubble. So if she's happy like this, then I'm happy for her. Period. The end. Thank you for watching this very short podcast, but that's how I'm feeling. There's nothing left to say. Trisha Paytas is happy. And I'm happy for her. Mm. That's it. I'm out, kids. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm bed, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun, dun.